we all know that there's been an epidemic, a pandemic, if I can say so, of censorship. It's been going on on social media where they acquiesce to government demands to censor certain information, to label certain information that might get in the way of profits or government propaganda as misinformation. And it also happens on the financial side. I mean, you have examples of Chase eliminating the accounts of porn stars, PayPal deplatforming people from using their services, which can be valuable. And I'm going to get to the solution in a moment. Then you had Airbnb negating Michelle Malkin's use of their services because she attended a conference that they did not approve of. The attendance speaking at a conference that a business doesn't approve of means that they can ax you, that they can, even as a quasi-monopoly, which Airbnb basically is, they have the ability to do so based on ideological premises, which is just ridiculous. And then they come out in support of censoring and making life hell for the Colorado baker who didn't want to bake a custom cake for somebody, which is very different than just being a platform and hooking people up with one another. You are basically coercing labor. But back to the financial censorship aspect of it, you had the GoFundMe funds that were raised for the truckers in Canada for the Freedom Convoy. They stopped distributing them. They then stated that if you did not specifically request a refund, that they would be giving those donations to other charities. So I donate to person X and you want to siphon it off to person Y? That is theft. That is brazen theft. And of course, they back down because of the public outcry and state attorney generals threatening to sue them. But the good news, though, there is a key to unlock this censorship box that we are in, and that is Bitcoin. Financial censorship, you cannot censor Bitcoin. This is why Bitcoin is free speech. It allows me to put my funds wherever I want them, and the government does not control them. It is completely decentralized. Nobody owns the network. You can put a gun to any number of Bitcoin miners' heads, and the network will continue. It's all over the globe that people are mining, on computers, on huge servers, on rigs that are specifically geared to mine Bitcoin. All that hash rate that is out there is protecting the system. And this is decentralized and it is outside of government control. And it is a technology that does threaten the power of the government. It limits what they can do. There is a way around it. It's a life raft away from the censorship, away from the financial censorship where you get to control your money, where the banks in other countries that don't have the same property rights laws that the United States does cannot come in and seize it. And as a store of value, as the U.S. prints money, ad nauseum, trillions and trillions of dollars to hand out to their loyalists, to their friends, to BlackRock, which imposes ESG models on corporations and turns, tries to turn everybody woke because they have immediate access to the printing press of the government. Bitcoin helps prevent that because as people lose faith with the currencies, they move into Bitcoin. It's a beautiful thing, but it's also the financial censorship because the truckers were able to get Bitcoin, and no one was able to take that from them. You do not have to beg somebody else for permission to use their services. You can't be thrown off of Bitcoin PayPal because PayPal does not own Bitcoin. I don't own Bitcoin. Michael Saylor doesn't own Bitcoin. China did its best to take a battle axe to Bitcoin, and it survived that when they kicked all of the miners out of their country. Bitcoin is censorship resistance, financial censorship Free speech is allowed to thrive under Bitcoin. This decentralization is a threat to the powers that be, and that is why they're against Bitcoin, because it threatens their stranglehold over the money supply, because it threatens their ability to act with impunity. And the deep platforming ends when we gain control of our own financial destiny, when we have the fat 
on our financial body because that's what savings is, is it's that that we can tap into during lean times. But when they steal your savings via the printing press, via the inflation, that just steals all that energy that you've saved up or just come and take your money for whatever reason as PayPal has done to various people. Well, that's why you bank yourself and that's why you hold your own keys to your Bitcoin. So get off of zero Bitcoin. Understand the value of it for society, not only as a personal store of value, but it helps keep people honest. Peace and blessings. Thumb up this video, subscribe, hit the all notification bell. Have a blessed day and once again, buy a little bit of Bitcoin.